So carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere or in the water and photosynthesizing organisms, plants, will be using the CO2 in the process of photosynthesis and using that to produce the carbon compounds that it needs, i.e. we're talking about proteins, we're talking about carbohydrates, we're talking about lipids and nucleic acids. Okay, so though all that carbon in the atmosphere that the plant uses it incorporates it into, into glucose, but as well as that, that carbon is also used to make these other organic molecules, and then it becomes part of the plant. As we said, it becomes part of its biomass, uses that carbon for its own growth via the production of these molecules. So that takes us to this stage right here. So we've discussed how carbon in the atmosphere moves or becomes carbon in organic molecules. So we've discussed where and what form it's, it started with and where it's gone. And we've discussed the process by which that happened. So that's what we're going to be repeating uh, as we go through this. So the carbon is now in the plants, in the molecules of the plant. However, the plant will use some of those molecules for respiration and in that process will convert the more complex molecules in, into CO2 and that CO2 will go back into the atmosphere. So I hope that we can see that that CO2 that was originally used for photosynthesis is now uh, going back into the atmosphere um, as, as, as CO2. But, but, you know, that's not all. That's not all of the molecules in the carbon compounds, just some, okay? And, yeah. Next, we have the idea that some of the, you know, the, the other organisms in the ecosystem will be using the carbon compounds in the plants as a source of um, biologically important molecules for themselves, either for respiration or for their own biosynthesis. If it's respiration, so the, uh, the other organisms feed on the plants and then the other organisms still may feed on those other organisms, talking about secondary consumers and, and so on. But whatever it is, the ultimate source of those uh, compounds would be the plants. So all the other um, organisms in the ecosystem, therefore, uh, the animals feed on the plants and some of those molecules the animals themselves use for respiration and so some of that carbon goes back into the atmosphere. And so we have carbon now in these two places. We have the carbon as the molecules in the animals. And we have the carbon in the molecules that are in the plants. Okay. Now, both of those organisms are not going to live forever. And when they, when they eventually die, or in the case of the uh, animals, there, there's also going to be the... Um, excretion, the egestion of the undigested materials that they consume, that death and excretion then is the next stage of the carbon cycle. So this is the next place where that carbon is going to end up. Still in the body, if you will, in inverted commas, of the organisms. However, that organism is now dead. So um, that carbon is locked in that uh, location and that's where we find ourselves now so when that organism dies that carbon um, is in the in that organism's body uh, or its cells it's still there however the organism is now dead but as well as that in the case of animals throughout their life there'll, there'll be this process resulting in the loss of molecules in that process but in either case, you get this organic matter, and that organic matter, a number of things can happen to it. We have these organisms, very important, called decomposers, which, you know, their niche is that they can um, use this dead organic matter as a source of their organic molecules, so that they can carry out respiration. Okay? So that's... And when they do that... When they do that, this CO2 will come back into the atmosphere from the dead organic matter.
Okay, so as these decomposers, they are able to absorb these molecules, use them in respiration, but when they do that, they generate the ATP for themselves, but the waste product CO2 goes back into the atmosphere. What are the other things that can happen? Well, the dead organic matter can be burnt, so it can be uh, used in the process of combustion, and that biomass in the dead organic matter can be used, so we could have just like, for example, cut a tree down and decided to burn it to generate some electricity or whatever, but as that um, process occurs, the molecules of which the tree was made um, undergoes the process of combustion and s turned into CO2. Re recall from your GCSE that the process of combustion very similar to the process uh, or the overall reaction of combustion very similar to the overall process of respiration. Okay, so we've looked at this, we've looked at this, and now the other thing that can happen is that this dead organic matter is not utilized by the decomposers and is not um, uh, undergoing combustion. However, it gets fossilized and that carbon gets trapped in fossil fuels, coal and oil. And that is where it remains until it's found and then extracted and then put through the process of combustion to generate electricity. But at that time, the CO2 gets added into the atmosphere. Okay. The other thing that can happen is that if, if this is happening, if this dead organic matter is uh, at the ocean floor, for example, it will undergo the process of sedimentation. And in that, it gets kind of under the pressure and heat, gets formed into carbonate rocks. But that's not, it's not going to stay like that forever because the process of weathering and volcanic activity results in whatever the carbon was in the carbonate rocks being released as CO2 back into the air and the water. So we need to be aware of these processes and we need to A, understand what we've just discussed here, put some time into, you know, invest most of your time in understanding that, but once that's understood, spend some time to make sure that you are able to recall these different processes and understand how those processes result in the movement of CO2 from one location to another. Moving on. Okay, so next is uh, just a, a wrapping things up really. Just to kind of um, talk about what the situation does, that's carbon cycle, that's kind of very theoretical. It's, it's how we understand how carbon moves through, but then we look at the real world application of it, like what is, when we look at the uh, amount of carbon in the atmosphere, and we look at climate change, and we look at the role of humans in that climate change, like how are humans impacting on the carbon cycle? That's the question. So we're looking at this idea that combustion of fossil fuels is, is obviously happening at a very high rate, okay? Combustion, combustion of fossil fuels is happening at a very high rate. We've already discussed that. Lots of parts of, you know, our, even in the developed countries, the, the use of, of energy is, is going up um, in terms of electricity. And in the developing world, you know, the process of industrialization is still possibly going on, which consumes a whole load of energy as well. Combine that with the fact that because of the expanding human population, more um, parts of the world are needed for, um, for homes, for building resources, wood. More land needs to be cleared, or more forest area might need to be cleared in order for farming to happen so that the human population has enough food to go around. So because of the expanding population, these two processes are affected. And because of these two processes are affected, it does impact on the carbon cycle. As we can see in the graph here, um, the, even though the industrial uh, countries or the countries that have undergone the industrial 
um, on industrialization process. So their use or, or, or their emission of carbon seems to be leveling off. It's the countries that are undergoing their industrialization process as we speak, their use of the fossil fuels is increasing. So let's look at why the combustion of fossil fuels is affecting the carbon cycle. We've, we've already discussed, we looked at the carbon cycle and we said, well, you know, the process of photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and puts it into plants, and plants eventually uh, go on to form our fossil fuels, and fossil fuels, we burn them, and the CO2 comes back into the atmosphere. What is the problem? What's the big deal? Why is there such a big palaver about this? What we need to understand is that this process of photosynthesis and incorporation of carbon dioxide into plants to the point where, uh, and, the, and the amount of time it takes for that dead plant material to become fossilized and, and, and forms into fossil fuels, that takes millions of years. So it's millions of years worth of photosynthesis that are contained in the fossil fuels. We then dig a hole in the ground, extract those fossil fuels, and carry out the process of combustion. However, the, you know, it's, it's only, you know, how long have we been doing this process? Uh, let's say, uh, let's say a hundred years. Okay, so a hundred years, and it's probably true that we haven't used up all of the fossil fuels, but we are, you know, there has been talk of getting to a point where we might use them up. So the amount of carbon dioxide that it took millions of years to incorporate into plant material, we are releasing back into the atmosphere in, in a time span much, much shorter than that. So clearly there's an imbalance. Clearly there's a very big imbalance in terms of the rate of formation of fossil fuels versus the rate of the release of CO2 from the fossil fuels back into the atmosphere by combustion. Very big discrepancy there, okay? The rate of combustion much greater than the rate of formation of the fossil fuels. And that's what's caused, that's what some people believe is the cause of um, the carbon cycle being out of balance or at least one of them. Next, we have deforestation. We've discussed the reasons why uh, it is done. Um, forest resources, you know, timber, we get building resources. Um, we, clear, we clear land for agricultural use, for food production for the human population. We clear that land to build homes for the expanding human population. But the problem is this, that when you cut down a forest, it's not that you're losing the photosynthesis, which is what I discuss here. In a climax community, actually what, what, I, what I say here is that photosynthesis, photosynthesis gives you growth, and growth, let's just say photosynthesis gives you increasing biomass, right, of a tree. So as a tree, if a tree is growing, its biomass is increasing, and as its biomass is increasing, we are using, we are overall consuming CO2. CO2 is being incorporated into the biomass of the plant and therefore being removed from the atmosphere. However, in an earlier part of this topic, we discussed this idea that climax communities, climax communities, uh, do I put it here? In a climax community, there's no overall growth. That, that ecosystem has reached a, an equilibrium where as much as there's new trees growing, there's probably other trees dying and decomposing, okay? So growth, so it, the, the CO2 that we're incorporating in the process of growth is probably equivalent to the amount of CO2 that's going back out because of the process of decomposition and the death of old trees, for example. Okay, and all the other animals that are in there respiring and so on. Okay, 
So this is the idea that in a climax community, um, such as a forest, that climax community, that forest is not resulting in overall removal of CO2 from the atmosphere. So the, the, it, there might be a, a, a misconception that deforestation is the loss of photosynthesis, and the loss of photosynthesis is what results in the addition of carbon into the atmosphere. It's not that. It's actually the fact that when you mow down a forest or cut it down, it's, you're increasing the rate of the decomposition. So the, all that tree material, or you're going you're gonna to burn it um, for... Uh, you're going to use it to burn it, uh, burn the fossil fuels and generate the electricity, or you're um, going to just chop it down and all that organic material is then going to decompose. So at that point, what happens is that the decomposition increases, and yes, we've lost the photosynthesis. So the photosynthesis has gone down, the decomposition has gone up because you've just chopped down and killed lots of living material which is now going to be decomposed by the decomposing organisms. So the decomposition process goes up, the respiration process goes up from there, but the photosynthesis has gone down and it's that, it's that idea that decomposition overtakes photosynthesis, it's that that results in the um, incorporate or, or the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere as a result of deforestation, okay? Not necessarily, not necessarily that, that that forest was actively re removing CO2 from the atmosphere for you. Okay, other factors that can affect the atmospheric carbon, we have volcanic eruptions. These can vary over time. So, um, you know, it, it might well be a valid argument that um, we've had more volcanic eruptions um, over time, and it's that that's causing the overall net increase in the CO2 levels and not human activity, that could be uh, argued. The next one is interesting, carbon dioxide is absorbed into the calcium carbonate shells of marine organisms, but this is balanced by erosion, okay? So it's at a balance. However, could climate change be affecting this balance? So could climate change, and we've talked about this idea that climate change changes the abiotic conditions and it could result in the, it could affect the marine organisms that have carbonate shells and therefore affect how much is actually absorbed into the shells, or the temperature might be changing the equilibrium constants in the ocean meaning that less CO, uh, less, less CO2 is actually absorbed into the shells. So all these things are possible. Acid rain increases um, the uh, chemical erosion of limestone, and so CO2 is, is added into the atmosphere. And at GCSE, you do discuss how um, human activity could be causing acid rain. So remember, human activity supposedly or allegedly increases CO2 levels. Um, we, we know that CO2 is produced from the combustion process, which has increased over time. Um, similarly, other things, uh, sulfur dioxide, which humans also contribute to, as well as volcanic eruptions, these both dissolve in water, forming um, acids, and this could increase the erosion of limestone and the production of CO2. Um, rising temperatures could cause uh, increased rate of decomposition. Remember, decomposition is an enzyme-driven process. And as the temperature increases, the rate of decomposition is naturally going to increase because of its effect on enzyme-catalyzed reactions. Okay, So all these factors need to be considered. You need to have these in your armory of comments that you could make um, when needed. Okay, next is this idea that there's a bit less carbon in the atmosphere than models suggest. Okay, so you need to be aware of why that is. And this is interesting because it makes you think again about the carbon cycle. So it's this idea that you increase CO2 and that's not just um, with a full stop on it. Because you increase CO2, which causes an increase in temperature. And what are two of the limiting factors for photosynthesis? They are temperature and they are CO2. 
So presumably, you increase the CO2, and you increase the temperature, and you, theoretically, could be increasing the rate of photosynthesis. And you increase the rate of photosynthesis, and you absorb more CO2. So you can see a scenario where this whole carbon cycle is, is a kind of self-controlling system, where if you increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the, you know, the other biological processes are changed in such a way that they start to absorb or remove CO2 from the atmosphere at just as high a rate. So it's, it's another thing that you've got to think about, and I have seen this come up in exams, so be aware of it. Okay, so how to help maintain the carbon balance? So what can you do, what can be done as a human population to, to try and control the CO2 going into the atmosphere? Sustainable resources, an idea that was introduced in topic four, as well as reforestation. And we'll just quickly discuss these before because it's not as obvious as it seems. Okay, so biofuels, make a special note of this point or this term, biofuels are, I mean, we, we, we carry out the process of combustion on biofuels just the same as on fossil fuels, the only difference being that the biofuels are a result of a recent photosynthesis. It's not taken millions of years worth of photosynthesis to form those biofuels. So essentially, it's just CO2 that's recently been removed that we are adding back. It's not that we are, we are releasing a big store of CO2 from under the ground suddenly into the atmosphere. So biofuels are a bit more sustainable because they are a product of a recent photosynthesis and you therefore do not net contribute to addition of CO2 into the atmosphere. They don't affect that. Okay. So what are examples? Wood, straw, chicken litter. So anything that's been made... Um, as a result of photosynthesis recently, okay? That was not fossilized. Disadvantages still releases carbon because all that energy that it took in its production, possibly, and its transportation, okay? Unfortunately, in order to make lots of biofuel, you have to clear rainforests, and we've already discussed um, the consequences of, of deforestation. Okay, uh, causes a loss of biodiversity. That's very important. We've discussed that. Biodiversity is important because it maintains genetic diversity, which is important for species to evolve to selection pressures. And remember, species um, are very important to humans, ultimately. A, maintains ecosystems. B, we get a lot of resources from organisms. Okay. And if you use, if you kind of re-source some of the um, photosynthesis products that you've been using, for example, edible corn oil, well, if you use that for biofuel instead, it reduces food availability, and that's a serious issue in some parts of the world. Okay. Reforestation, then, um, building on the idea that we were talking about before, reforestation is not simply just to get photosynthesis going again, but it's the idea that a reforestation process means that trees will be growing. And because they're growing, okay, because they're still growing from young trees to mature trees, they are accumulating, they are accumulating biomass. And the reason that they are doing this, or the, or the way that they can do this, is because they are incorporating, they're taking carbon from the atmosphere and incorporating it into molecules. Yes, because of photosynthesis, but it's overall it's because they are growing. A mature tree is not growing and therefore overall is not removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere.